To the late feed, everyone, I'm Ron Jones. The war of words between the leader of North Korea and Donald Trump continues to heat up tonight. Kim Jong-un is now threatening to test a hydrogen bomb in the Pacific, a massive explosion the world hasn't seen in almost 40 years. And speaking of almost four decades, I was a young soldier, pretty fresh out of advanced infantry training at Fort Benning, Georgia. Later, I was stationed right on the DMZ in South Korea at Camp Greaves, where we could see North Korean soldiers and civilians from our barracks. We were always concerned about the threat from the North, and if attacked, we and the South Korean soldiers, we knew we would probably suffer mass casualties. That was then, 1978, and now, take a look. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself. Vowing to make President Trump, quote, pay dearly calling him a mentally deranged dotard. The president blasting back on Twitter, vowing Kim will be tested like never before. All right, fast forward now, 2017, and the threats and insults between North Korea and Trump administration. has a lot of folks really concerned about right. war. Ryan Kruger is here, and Ryan, the new discussion tonight is about the safety of the Olympics next year. Yeah, that's right, Ron. So far, three countries, Austria, Germany, France, they are all threatening to skip the Olympics, not because of... Leaving it to every Olympics, there's a security concerns and the all kinds of concerns about going and competing in a foreign country. So we're always monitoring. So that was Elena Meyer. She's the 2014 silver medalist in the bobsled. She's from the metro area. We asked her about uh, the, any of the concerns about going into it. Here's what she had to say. Leaving it to every Olympics, there's a security concerns and the all kinds of concerns about going and competing in a foreign country. So we're always monitoring it, but we're, we have faith and confidence that you, the U.S. Olympic Committee is looking out for our best interests and they're keeping abreast of the situation. Back, let's go back to the war of words between right. Donald Trump and Kim Jong Un. Of course, uh, you know, a lot of folks are really concerned about right. that, but mixed reaction from politicians today? Yeah, it really kind of depends on if you're on the left or on the right, as far as you. So let's go ahead and start with this one. David Perdue was, of course, one of President Trump's biggest allies, yeah. Georgia senator. This is the tweet he sent out POTUS sent a loud message to financial institutions around the world uh, choose between doing business with the U.S. or supporting a rogue regime. So that was from the right. On the left, you have President, former President Jimmy Carter. Here he was today. He was, uh, they were renaming part of a plaza at Georgia Southwestern in his honor. Now, today he said when he was president, two things he was concerned about. Humanitarian rights, but he also wanted to keep the U.S. out of a war, keep the U.S. at peace. Here's a little bit of what he had to say. While I was uh, in the White House, I had two ambitions. One was to keep our country at peace, and the other one was to be a champion of human rights. And I was fortunate enough. We never dropped a bomb. We never fired a bullet. We never launched a missile when I was in office. And I hope that we can return to that commitment to peace and human rights sometime in the future. So you heard him say right. he wants to return to that commitment of human of, or, uh, peace and human rights. I will say, President Trump, this was him tonight speaking in Alabama, just right next door at a Senate rally there. Mm -hmm. Again, using the term rocket man, he said Kim Jong-un, rocket man, should have been handled a long time ago by his two predecessors. It's going to be interesting to see how they handle what he's calling the rocket man and what right. that's going to do for the U.S. All right, Ryan, thanks a lot.